Hello, today is my 33rd birthday. Uh, or today, as I'm recording this, who knows what day you might be seeing it on. I feel a little bit weird about the idea of sharing this and getting enthusiastic happy birthday responses. So whatever day you are seeing this on, we can just skip that. This is probably the worst birthday of my three decades on this earth. I thought about it. Uh, 22 was pretty fucking terrible. It was terrible in a way that has now been reduced to a funny story, but that was truly miserable when I was like in it. So I feel that I have to acknowledge it at least as a runner up, but I gave it a good long think and this one wins. Parts of my first pandemic birthday were honestly kind of lovely thanks to some of my very wonderful friends. It was terrible in its own way, to be clear, but at that time it still felt like it was just gonna be a rough spring and here we were rallying together to get through it. I have said a few times that this one is mostly just like 32 redux, mostly in response to other people talking about the aging factor of celebrating a second pandemic birthday, but the honest truth is that I don't actually care about the idea of my age being a bigger number. Like that is a data point that I have truly neutral feelings about. When I turned 29, my uncle teased me that it was the first time I was turning 29, but it wouldn't be the last. And it took me an embarrassingly long time to even get the joke. Uh, in case you, like me, also don't get it right away, the joke is like lying about your age. I don't know, maybe I'm still too young to have reached this particular anxiety. So that could just be a fun little treat awaiting me. Uh, for now, I don't care. The nightmare of this day is wholly unrelated to my age going from 32 to 33. The thing is, while I don't care about my age, I do feel a certain anxiety around the passage of time, but it's not about the elapsed time, it's about the time remaining. It's about the fact that I only have so much time left to do everything. No pressure, but I have, I don't know, 50 years to do everything. Uh, it, it's just, it's, it's the, the running out of time feeling. I don't typically feel this anxiety around my birthday though. This is more of a fun little brain thing where I lose sleep and sometimes the ability to function just like over the normal course of a year. It's really great how my brain decides to use some of that like precious limited time to obsess over how limited the time is. Love that. And so this birthday, pandemic birthday number two, is a reminder of the year of my life, the year of that precious limited time that was lost. And I feel a little resentful, if I'm being honest, about the fact that some part of me knows that I should be grateful for how much worse things could have been for me. I am alive and healthy and I kept my job and ability to pay my bills this past year. I actually prefer working from home and one of the few things that I would like to take away from this year is never being needlessly forced back into an office again, but I was still having to do my full-time job in the middle of a global pandemic and in fact that sucked. The fact that I am comparatively lucky does not mean that this experience was great, only that the collective experience was so horrifying that this is good fortune. I am excited about vaccines. I get my second shot in 10 days. Um, I finally know when I'm gonna get to hug my parents again. There, There is hope on the horizon and I am not trying to take away from that. If that is your prevailing feeling right now, then please sit with that and enjoy it. Um, in spite of everything I was saying right now, I have also been feeling waves of that. But all of those good, genuinely good things aren't going to undo this past year and change. The lost year of our lives, the actual lives lost, the broken systems that allowed it to get this bad. All of that doesn't magically go away when we reach herd immunity. Um, I don't magically feel better about all of that when I can finally board a plane again. The grief and trauma of this year is going to be a weight in our pockets for who knows how long. And yes, I do have little glimmers of light to reflect on from this year. I made so many things uh, and have some friendships that were instrumental in making this time feel a little less isolating. I finally got on medication for my brain. Um, and honestly, this would be so much worse <laughs> right now without it. That stuff is all true. 
But right now, the thing that I am feeling most acutely is the loss and sadness. And I think that the kindest thing that I can do for myself today is to allow space for that, to allow for this to be kind of a bleak anniversary, because it is. The work from home anniversary came and went, and I barely noticed uh, outside of like some social media posts, but I, I wasn't feeling it. This, this is a moment that is hitting me a little harder for all of the reasons that I have said. <laughs> I don't have it in me right now to fake another celebration in this fucking box that I have not been able to leave in uh, over a year. Maybe tomorrow I will be back on that hope train, but today, today we're feeling this. Mostly sadness, but like when I think about trying to force that sort of happiness and enthusiasm, um, uh, then I feel angry. <laughs> and on some level the anger is a little bit nicer than the sadness, uh, but all of it is bad. And this is not the last time that I am going to be feeling all of this. And I think that it is not only extremely disingenuous, but also actively harmful to force that bright side perspective onto these moments. Because, uh, like, this has been terrible. That's just true. <laughs> we can and should cultivate hope, but the only way we get to any kind of healing is allowing space for the grief too. The grief and the sadness and the anger. So here I am creating that space for myself and for you too, if you need it. That's all. <laughs>